Good morning, Happy New Year, and welcome to week two of our series of holiday stream church services giving our Sunday teams a well-deserved break. Can you believe that 2023 is done and dusted? For some of us, we say good riddance. For others, it was thank you. And for others still, it was just another year. Whatever your 2023 was like, we pray that 2024 will be a year of transformation. You may already know what you want transformation from and have made New Year's re resolutions to suit. And I'm guessing that of which all will be for something positive, something better than last year. But my prayer for all of us is that we might seek the transformation that God desires for us, to be more like Him, to have a heart that is burdened as His is, to speak, live, love and act the way He would want us to and be the very people He desires us to be. So although that transformation will be unique to you, you don't have to do it alone. It's so wonderful to be part of a church family that is willing to do that journey with you. And this year, we'll see some new programs, some new training and resources that will be rolled out that may help you with your transformation. So as we start 2024, we invite you to join together with all God's people, scattered but still His, and begin with worship and praise for our living, loving, transforming God. Let's praise Him now. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure, praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water, my enemies drown in. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to pray.
Hi, I'm Perry. I invite you to join me as I pray this prayer of adoration that was written by Dana from the Church of the Covenant. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we know to love and adore you because you first loved us. We adore you for the creation of our unique planet in its unique place in the universe you created. We adore you for creating mankind and for providing us the ability to be good stewards of each other and of this world. We adore you for sending your Son to save us from ourselves, to redeem us from our sins. We adore you for loving us in spite of ourselves, for offering us salvation and eternal life with you. So Lord, we join together this morning to worship and adore you through song, through scripture, through prayer and the hearing of your word. We pray that you accept our worship and guide us to a greater understanding of you and who you want us to be. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 through to chapter 4 verse 5 and I'm reading from the New International Version. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires. They will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Amen. I wonder if you remember the Yellow Pages ad that immortalised Jan. Now kids, at one time, not that long ago, if you wanted to know someone's phone number, you had to look in a phone book. If it was for someone's uh, house, for their home address, you looked in the white pages. If though, if it was for a business, you looked in the Yellow Pages, but you had to apply to be in the Yellow Pages. Now Jan got into trouble for not doing her job not doing the job she was supposed to do. You know what? Let's have a look at the ad. Jan? Jan? Where's our ad in the Yellow Pages directory? Keep calm. Count to ten. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten. Who remembers the ad? Type Jan in the comments if you do. Our family still uses that line from time to time. Not happy, Jan. So today's message is titled exactly that. Not happy, Jan. Why? Because I've noticed that there's been a shift in culture brewing for some time now, which continues to gain momentum. That tells us that life is all about being happy. Do whatever you need to be happy. Talk how you want to, act how you want to, believe what you want to, do what you want to, just to be happy. Now there's a saying that I I hear around a little bit that says, you do you. And as long as you do that, everything is fine. Now please hear me right. Every one of us has been created unique. There are no two people exactly the same and life is so much richer for that. We need individuals to be who and what God has created them to be. But each person cannot live in their own little sphere, their own little bubble, doing as and being as they please. Society would just fall apart if they did. Take the roads, for example. They are bad enough as they are with South Australia experiencing a terrible year in 2023 when it comes to road accidents. But imagine, if you will, driving on the road where everyone did exactly what they wanted, driving at whatever speed they wanted, on whatever side of the road they wanted, going through intersections whenever they wanted. It would be utter chaos. Can you imagine the bedlam? We hope that common sense would prevail. However, what is common sense nowadays? If you look at a society where, for whatever reason, law and order has broken down, does everything become calm and peaceful? Unfortunately, no. There is complete anarchy with rioting, looting and lawlessness all over the streets. Humanity as a whole defaults back to our sinful nature. I came across a news article over the New Year period which was posted on the ABC News app that caused me some concern. 
It's not a new phenomenon. In fact, it, the ABC has reported on this a couple of times before, but it is, there is a statistical trend towards that now being tracked and researched. The article focused on a young female who has chosen to, and I quote, embrace her own set of new age spiritual practices and beliefs. It reports that she seeks a moment of truth by gazing into a mirror, and she states that there's a change coming and it's gonna be huge. Now, I don't know if she has noticed a very large pimple developing on her face, or if she's talking about, oh sorry, if she's taking a, st a stab in the dark saying that a big challenge is coming could mean just about anything. But the article reports that this young lady is part of a growing cohort of people turning to new age spiritual practices and beliefs, especially post COVID. They report that the lady's worldview is typical of people who are uh, ascribing to this way of thinking. The thing that I noticed, and this is what concerns me, is the jumbling together of a number of different belief systems into a unique personal spirituality tailored to bring happiness. Happiness is not necessarily an indicator of truth. Happiness is an emotion that depends on so many things and can be different for different people, even within the same experience. If you're looking into a mirror to find truth, then chances are you're going to get everything backwards. James 1, 22, 25 says, do not merely listen to the word and, do, and deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away immediately and forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Truth is not found by looking in a mirror. Truth is found by looking at scripture, at the word of God. But what it doesn't say in James is that by doing so, everyone will be happy. It says that we will be blessed in what we do. Unfortunately, we have hooked into the idea that blessed means happy or profitable or successful. Godly blessing is not how we see it, it's how God sees it. And sometimes being blessed may come in a way, may come in the way of correction. As we read earlier from 2 Timothy, all scripture comes from God and is not there to make us happy or profitable or successful, but is useful for what? For teaching, rebuking, correcting and training. And Paul, the writer of the letters to Timothy, goes on to spell out exactly what the ABC article is telling us is going on today. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. I wonder if the reason why so many people, especially young people, are leaving the church today is because we are firstly not doing the teaching, the rebuking, the correcting and the training. We are actually preaching things that people want to hear, to tickle their ears and make them feel happy. And then secondly, when we do do the teaching, we are not doing it in a way we are supposed to. Paul tells us, do so with great patience and careful instructions. Not belittling people, not telling them that they're bad, not shouting at them or being frustrated by them, but knowing and understanding that we are all sinners and are all, all needing God's grace, that we too are need, in need of teaching, rebuking, correcting and training as well. If we understand this, it should make the way, the way we interact with others very different. If we, we realize that our lives are in the same category as those we are walking with, we are equal learning from each other and learning together from scripture. What we should be doing is introducing people, not to the church, which has rules and regulations, but to the one who came to model patience and careful instruction with love, 
with compassion and with peace, uh, sorry, with grace. We need to introduce people to Jesus. If someone puts together their own belief system, they may have some part in it that is correctional, but I'm pretty sure they won't include anything that rebukes themselves. If we are always striving to be happy, we are not going to take uh, ourselves down a path that will cause us to be upset. But it's in this mucking up, in being rebuked, in the reflecting, in the seeking instruction and the making necessary adjustment, adjustments that we truly learn. We also need a set of guidelines, a set of instructions that have stood the test of time to base our correction off of. A you do you is not going to cut it because let's face it, we suck. We wouldn't know right from wrong if we ran into it in the street. Left to our own devices, we go astray every time. That's why we need the truth of scripture underpinning our lives. Look to scripture. Look to scripture for your direction and your guiding. Not to ourselves, not to self-help books, not to social media, not even to me. Pick up your Bible, read it, think over it, discuss it with others, and then do it. And as you do it, invite others to discover the real truth with you that you learn from the scripture and then you'll receive the blessings from God. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you gave us scripture, your word. You gave it in written form and you gave it in your son so that we might learn the way that you would have us live. Bless us, Lord, as we strive to be more like your scripture teachers and more like your son. Help us not to look at others as sinners, but help us to see ourselves in that same category and, and do the work and the journey and the walk with others with grace and compassion and peace and love. So thank you, Lord. Bless us today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
There's a song that a lot of us will know by Bobby McFerrin called Don't Worry, Be Happy. Who's singing it now? It talks about some of the problems of life and simply says, don't worry, be happy. The problem is though, it doesn't actually give any suggestions on how to be happy, just that you need to be. If we build our lives on Jesus, on his teaching and on his example, then our lives will be set on the right path. Maybe happy, maybe not. We don't need to guess what the path is. Scripture is there to direct and guide us every day of our lives. We just need to pick it up and read. Life with Jesus might not always be happy and peaceful. It might be for you. But either way, it will be the way he designed it for you. And in that, the good times and the hard, there are lessons to be learned and transformation that will occur through them. Shortly, there will be a few questions that come on the screen. And, and, and once I finish speaking, please take the time to stop, reflect and consider these for yourself and then take some time to share them with someone you trust. Maybe you're watching this with someone now that you can share them with. Let me share with you a blessing to take us into the rest of our day. In every moment of this day and this year, may you know the embrace of God's love. May you hear the whisper of God's voice. May you feel the presence of God's spirit. May you share the knowledge of God's grace in every moment of every day. God bless. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe.
Jesus, the only 